Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Studio Live today. And in this video, we will be taking a look at the key differences between setting up with an XLR microphone setup and a USB microphone setup. If that doesn't mean anything to you though, don't worry, we'll be getting into the detail as we go through here. So if you are new to recording and you're just setting up a home studio or a mobile studio, this is gonna be a great video for you. We're gonna get into some detail and help you decide what you need to get to get yourself set up. If you're more experienced, Maybe you want to set yourself up a mobile studio or a smaller home studio rig with your iPhone or your iPad. So maybe you want to think about using a small portable interface or a USB microphone. They're actually a lot better than they used to be. And we're going to dive in to the detail of that as we go here as well. But hey... If it's your first time here, who am I and what am I doing here? Well, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where I help you create, record and release your best music. And we talk a lot about creating music, the songwriting process and some of the psychology behind music creation, the recording, which is what we're talking about here today, as well as releasing because releasing is so important. It gets your music out there. It helps with the development of your music and it also helps you by sharing your art with the world, which is why we do this whole music capability to begin with yeah so that is what we'll be going through today now if you if it is your first time hearing that sounds good to you then consider subscribing if you like the content if you get value out of this today hit the like button and share this with someone else who also likes recording music because they might get some value out of it as well now all the gear that i mentioned in this video is over at my website so it's studiolivetoday.com slash gear and g-e-a-r and there you can find all the things i talk about as well as all the other gear that I use and recommend and there's affiliate links there so it means that if you buy something they break off a little chunk and send it my way so you get cool new gear and you're supporting the channel which is very cool. Uh, I've also just kicked off my new mailing list so if you're a regular or even if you're new to the channel and you want to keep up to date if you head to studiolivetoday.com the mailing list option will pop up there. You can join the mailing list and be up to date with all of the things that go on here as well as some cool exclusive content content that we'll be working on for the folks on the mailing list. So there you go. There's the introduction. That's who I am and what we're doing here. So what uh, what I like to do first up is let you know the format because your time is valuable and my time's pretty valuable, hopefully. Um, so I want to make sure that you know what, what you're in store for. And the way I do things, I do it a bit differently. Instead of it being a whole hour and you having to sit here and work out what's going on and when am I going to get to stuff, the first 15 minutes is what I call my, my crash course. This is my quick guide. So if you've only got 15 minutes, don't worry. Hang around for the first 15 and I'm going to give you all the basic essential info that you need to know. And then what we're going to do is we'll head back into the live chat. I'll chat to anyone who's here and say hello to them, answer any questions. So if you're here live, and yes, this is a live stream. So if you're here live, then drop your questions in the comments right now and in the next 15 minutes. And then when I come back and I'm having a chat to you folks, I'll jump in and talk to any of those. So if you've got questions about recording, especially to do with microphones, XLR or USB microphones, or your own recommendations for microphones. What do you use? What do you think works well in your home studio environment. Let me know that as well. So that is it. And then by the way, after we do that, we're going to go into a bit of a deep dive. And I've actually got some gear. You can't see it, but I'm going to bring the camera down to my desktop and we're going to do a little bit of recording. So if you want to actually see some of the gear that I talk about in action, if you're more of a practical learner rather than a theoretical learner, then hang around for the second half because that's where we're going to be jumping in and doing the fun stuff where we're going to actually be using this gear to record some guitar, some vocal. I don't know. You, you help me along. Those that are here live, let me know what we should be recording. Anyway, let's get on with this now. I'll say a quick hello to the folks who are kind enough to be here. G'day, Jeremy Ray Williams. We've got Goth Demon, my friend. You are great. Uh, you're always here. Cookie Montage. We've got Kenneth Briggs, Vince Knight, Ian Skeggs, Andrea. Hello to you. And Superfly UI. I love that name. Very, very cool. Hello to you folks. So let's jump in now and get straight into this content because I'm pretty excited about this because I, I get a lot of my ideas from questions I get on my channel. So I do a lot of videos. I do a video every day on home recording and studio rec uh, mobile studio recording and a lot of people have been asking me lately they're just starting out or they're just setting up their mobile studio and they're like okay I've been using my onboard microphone as I whack my own microphone I've been using my onboard microphone for a while or they've been using a pair of earbuds and just using the mic on that and they say what's next so what do I go to next once I've sort of gone yeah I'm getting good sounds but I'm not getting great sounds what's my next option and this is where there's kind of a little bit of a, a segue here because there's two main directions you can go 
And that's what we're talking about here. There is using an XLR microphone. So by XLR microphone, we mean that you'll be using a, an audio interface, as I unplug that, an audio interface like this one, the Steinberg UR12, and you can actually plug a microphone into this. So you get yourself an interface, you plug that in, and then you can use any XLR microphone like this one here that has this plug here. And we'll be talking more about all of this and what this means in a moment. So that's sort of direction one. I'm just going to turn down that thing so we don't get that noise again. Um, and then direction number two is USB. Now, USB microphones have come a long way. When they first came out, they were definitely the poor cousins of the XLR microphones because they were just, they were cheap and nasty. They were made for just using on your Mac or your PC and plugging in and just using for like Skype and voiceover audio. But these days, USB microphones are right up there. They're using, in many cases, the same capsules, the same quality components as your XLR microphones. The only key difference is they're using a USB connection instead of XLR, which means means they're a lot simpler setup and we'll talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of both of these as we go through but the the main difference here is that USB is just plug it straight in via the USB cable and you're off to the races you're good to go with that one using an XLR microphone like the one I'm using here. So this is actually plugged in through my mixer, which I have over to the side here, or you can use an interface to plug it in. And you can plug it into other things like PAs and mixing desks and things like that. So that's the basics, but let's sort of round back now and dive into XLR microphones in a little bit more detail here so that you can get a bit better understanding. So XLR, here is one I prepared earlier. This is an XLR cable. So it is a three pin cable. You can see there, it's got the three little pins in that end, the male end and the female end. And what these do is they clip into our microphone. So we'll clip that end in there. And then the other end is what plugs into our audio interface. So whatever we're using to capture our audio. So it's a balanced cable, which means you get good quality because there's the three different pins. There's a ground pin in there and then there's the other two pins which create a balanced cable. And I won't go into the details because this is the quick set Section, but it just means that you get a good quality signal going into your mixer, into your audio interface, into your PA, wherever you're going. Now, this is not to be confused with something like a quarter inch cable. So a quarter inch cables are usually unbalanced if they're the TS cable, which is like your standard guitar cable, or they can be balanced as well when you're using things like monitor speakers as well, or stereo balanced cables. But um, generally, you want to be using an XLR. You can get microphones that use a quarter inch cable. They're usually not very good quality and you can get something like a, a XLR to a quarter inch adapter and then plug in through a guitar interface. But the problem there is that you're not going to be using a preamp or a preamplifier. So if you plug directly in to like a, a quarter inch jack or you get a quarter inch to a three and a half mil converter and you plug straight into your iPhone or your iPad's headphone socket, you might be thinking, hey, I could just plug any microphone in there and off I go. There's a lot of problems related to that. You can't monitor the audio, so there's no way to get that sound back out to, to overdub and to, to track multiple tracks, and you're not going to get very good quality. The audio level is going to be way too low because it's not being amplified by a preamp, which we'll talk about a little bit more as we go through. So XLR, as I mentioned, is used in audio interfaces. It's used in mixing desks, amplifiers, some of them, like some guitar amps even have an XLR plug as well as their quarter inch PAs, and they're basically the universal connection. If you're, if you're sending audio, if you're sending microphone audio to somewhere, you are 99% of the time, you're sending it via an XLR cable because that is just the industry standard that we use. And all of your microphones that you buy, generally speaking, will have an XLR connection unless they are USB, which we'll be talking about in a moment. So let's talk power for a moment because there are two different types of microphone. And I've just realized I don't have the other type here, but there is a condenser microphone like this one, which needs phantom power. So most of your audio interfaces, most of your mixers, uh, a lot of things provide phantom power. Things that don't are things like your amplifiers or your uh, PA systems. They may not provide phantom power. So you do need to think about what type you get. The main difference is that these, as I said, require power. They're a lot more sensitive, generally speaking. They have a usually a better range that they pick up. So they're good for things like vocals and spoken word because you get a better uh, pickup of the range of your voice but they also pick up a lot more sound. So they will pick up the background noise. So you may be hearing, like I'm in a non-treated room here where I do these streams and I'm using a condenser microphone. It's picking up a lot of detail. And if I'm quiet for a second, 
you can hear a little bit of the background noise of my room. But again, it's not that noticeable when you're actually singing or, or using the microphone. The other type of microphones are a dynamic microphone. So these are the classic, if you see someone using a handheld microphone, like the SM58 from Shaw, that is a, a dynamic microphone. So anytime you see a singer on a stage or someone with, is plugged into a PA system, you're 99% of the time, they're going to be using a dynamic mic. And you can use those in the studio, but they have with them their own limitations and I've got a heap of videos on the channel all about microphones and we're not talking specifically dynamic versus condenser here today but I just wanted to talk a little bit about that up front. What you generally want to do though is if you're setting up a home studio or a mobile studio environment I'm always going to recommend the first mic you pick up is a condenser, a large diaphragm condenser like this one. This is the MXL 550 and we're actually going to be, I'll bring it over, we're actually going to be playing later with, as we go out of focus, this one, the MXL551, which is a small diaphragm condenser. And the reason I'm showing that is that that comes in the same pack as this one for about $70, I think. Uh, if you go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear, you can take a look at these. But for about $70, you get a large diaphragm and a small diaphragm microphone and the cool little case that they come in. So I've talked about those before, but that is my recommend for an entry-level XLR microphone set. That is my recommendation for that. Let's jump back to the notes because I've gone off track a little bit. Um, we've talked about Dynamics versus condensers. So what are the advantages? Why would you, and we'll get into USB mics in a moment, but why would you go for something like an XLR setup over a USB, knowing that not only do you need the mic, but you need the cables, you need the adapters, you need the audio interface. There's a lot more to get. It's a lot more complex setup, but what are the advantages? So they are this. It is universal, so it, it's used across the board and you're always going to be able to grab your mic and plug into any sort of system, which makes it very super compatible with all the other gear that you might be using. So that's sort of number one. Uh, you can easily swap out parts of your setup. So if you do, if you do invest in an audio interface and then you get a microphone that you plug in this and then you want to upgrade this to a two or a four channel audio interface, you can keep your same microphone and then plug in. Vice versa is the same. You can swap out your microphone, keep your audio interface if you really like the preamp on that one. Once you've got your cabling set up, you can swap in and out the different components. When you go to USB, as we'll talk about in a moment, you're kind of stuck with what you get. Um, other advantages, the uh, it's easy for a live rig. So if you do have a dynamic microphone, so if you get a Shure SM57 or 58, then you can use that live. You can plug it into the PA system, you can plug it into an amplifier, you can plug it into other different uh, things, and you'll be good to go. You don't have to worry so much about the compatibility of that. You obviously can't plug a USB mic into any of those sort of things. Um, and it is good for multiple mic setups. So I did mention before, I talked about this one, this has only got one channel, the Steinberg UR12, but you can get two channel, four channel, eight channel interfaces, which means that you can have multiple mics plugged in at once. With USB mics, it can be done, but it gets super confusing and tricky once you have two USB mics, because they want to be the input and the output of your audio. So it gets hard because you have to then do a lot of funky routing. And if you're on an iPhone or an iPad, it's going to be really unsupported. If you're on a Mac or a PC, it can be done, but again, you're kind of making life difficult for yourself. If you grab a, an interface, then whether you plug it into your Mac, your PC, or your iPhone or your iPad, it's just going to work out of the box and you're going to have all those different inputs and you're going to be able to assign a different microphone to a different track. And say you've got four channel interface, you've got four microphones and four people talking on a podcast or four vocalists that you're recording at the same time, then you can record all four tracks independently, which makes life a heck of a lot easier. So that is XLR microphones. So that's the advantages. What about the disadvantages? So we're going to keep things balanced here. We've talked about a little bit of this, but it is a more complex setup. So a USB mic is plug and play. You plug it in, it turns on, it recognizes it. Usually they don't even require drivers, which we'll talk about in a moment, and then you're good to go. The problem or the challenge you have with XLR is you need to know how to connect your interface and whether you need drivers or anything for that. You then need to make sure you've got XLR cables to connect your microphone up. You need USB cables and sometimes power in order to power your interface as well. There's a lot more components to think about. So the trade-off there is it can be a more complex setup. Um, as I mentioned, there's lots and lots of cables there as well. Um, you need to worry about the power situation. So you need to worry about whether you have phantom power into your condenser microphones, but you also need to worry about powering up your mixer or your interface and how you're going to manage that as well. And there's more things to go wrong. So <laughs> there's more parts of the chain. If something's not working with a USB mic, you unplug it and you plug it back in and that's about all you can do. 
in this, you know, you've got all of your different gain stages. You've got all the different dials that you can dial up your gain at different levels. You've got all the different cables. So, you, yeah, you, you do spend a bit of time. Sometimes if something goes wrong, you're like, okay, I've got to swap out the cable. No, it wasn't that. Swap out the USB cable. Wasn't that. Swap out the microphone. Wasn't that. So there's more that can actually go wrong and more complexity in there. So that is XLR microphones. We're going to have a, have a quick coffee break. Let's jump into USB. So hopefully you're getting some value, as I mentioned, out of this. If you are, hit the like button. Uh, do me a favor there. That would be amazing. And if you've got other people that want to get into mobile or, or, uh, or, or home recording, then share this video with them. Uh, hopefully they'll find it interesting, especially if they're at that early stages of setting up their home or their mobile studio. All right, let's talk about USB mics for a moment. So USB, it uses a USB port. That's why it's called a USB mic. So it's got a mini or micro USB on the back of the microphone that plugs in via a USB cable directly into your iPad, your iPhone, well not the iPad, directly into your Mac or your PC. If you're using an iPhone or an iPad, you need an additional piece of gear, which you need with your audio interface anyway. And I probably should have talked about this earlier, but the lightning to USB adapter, this one here, this is a lightning to USB three adapter. And again, you, most of you that are here on the live stream have definitely heard me talk about this, but if you're new to the channel, this is the piece of kit you need to convert a USB signal into a lightning signal. So if you're using your iPhone or your iPad, then you need to be able to plug into lightning at this end and then plug in your USB mic from the microphone into the lightning to USB adapter. If you're using a Mac or a PC, you don't need this. You go straight into your USB port and that's what makes USB microphones so appealing is that when you're starting out, especially if you're on a Mac or a PC, you buy this, it comes with the cable, it has a headphone jack, you plug in your headphones, you turn it on and you start singing, playing guitar, playing your ukulele, whatever you are recording, you just get going. So that is why a USB microphone is so appealing. And as I said, the quality of these is really good now. Used to be that they were the second class citizen, then very much not. Now, as I said, they deliver very comparable quality compared to your XLR microphone. So that is the basics of the USB. Now, make sure if you are buying a USB mic, I reckon, by the way, this one's the Samson Meteor. Isn't it cute? It's as a uh, little uh, all metal body, really solid, rugged construction, has a little fold up legs. It looks adorable and it comes with its really sexy velour pouch over here. So yeah, it, it is just the bomb and I like it and I use it a lot. Um, there's others you can get. I, I talk about the Blue Yeti, which is probably the industry standard for, uh, especially for streamers, gamers, twitchers, all of those folks, um, as well as music. Does a good job with music. And then if you're getting more serious, you've got things like the Audio Technica, the AT2020 USB, um, and Rode even make a version of their NT1A, which is a USB version. So again, these are these are real microphone manufacturers that are making these, um, and they are just as good because they're using the same components. The only difference is instead of needing an audio interface, and I keep holding up my Steinberg UI12, instead of needing to plug in via an audio interface, these plug in directly via USB. So the USB connection, what these have different is that they have the audio, think of it like they have the sound card built in. So if you think, <coughs> excuse me, if you think about the old days of your PC or your Mac, uh, you'd have a sound card. So you'd, you'd all know that on your laptop, your desktop, you have your little three and a half mil plugs for your, these days it's usually only one. It's usually a TRRS jack, which is your microphone as well as your headset, as well as your, your um, as well as your headphones. But they have that jack on there and that goes into the sound card. An audio interface like this one replaces the sound card. So does a USB microphone. So that's probably the, the concept that a lot of folks don't, grasp first up because they're like, oh, plug my microphone in. Oh, I suddenly can't hear my sound. What's going wrong? Well, nothing's going wrong. What's happened is that this is both the input and the output of your sound. So all good USB microphones, and I'll talk about some that don't in a minute, all good USB microphones have a headphone jack, which means that you can plug in headphones and output your sound directly from the microphone. You don't need to use your onboard sound or any other external sound device. You can just use your microphone. So that makes things super handy and it means that everything can be done there. Now, some, the Blue Snowball, I believe, is one that doesn't, don't have a headphone jack. So that's not a huge deal if you're using, say, a Mac or a PC because you can, in your software, you can do some routing where you can, say, use that as the input and then route your output to your other sound card and, and you're all okay. You can introduce some latency 
latency and lag uh, if you do that, um, which we will talk about a little bit more when we go into the demo. But the um, problem is if you're using an iPad or an iPhone, so if you're using it via one of these, there's no way to do that, especially if you're using like an iPhone 10 or 8 or 7 or the new iPad Pro, well, then they're not going to have a headphone jack for you to even monitor through. So if you're looking for a USB microphone, get one with a headphone jack is my strong recommendation. Back to the notes here. Uh, so what do they do? They are plug and play. So they're usually very simple to set up and usually require uh, no drivers. So for your Mac or your PC, it doesn't matter if they do require a driver, but what you want, like everything with the iPad and the iPhone, you want it to be class compliant, meaning that it works out of the box. You don't need to plug in any other devices. You can just go with this one. You don't need any, sorry, any other drivers. You just plug it in and it works. If it does need drivers just to function, then it's not gonna work with your iPhone or your iPad because you can't install drivers on an iPhone or an iPad, but most of your modern USB mics are iOS compatible, but check that. And that's why I recommend the Blue Yeti and why I recommend this one here, the Samson Meteor, because they are both class compliant and they do both work and they are both listed at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. Let's talk advantages. So what is the advantage? We've kind of covered this by the opposite of the XLR. So they are simple. There's only one thing. There's only one cable to plug in. Well, two if you count the lightning to USB adapter for your iPhone or your iPad, but there's less that can actually go wrong. Um, they are pretty affordable. So this one comes in at around $60, $70, and that's for everything. So then if you get that and you get this for around $30, $40, for about $100, you got yourself your audio, your recording setup. You don't need to then spend any extra on cabling, any extra on an interface or anything like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, and what else do we have? Yeah, less can go wrong. So we talked about that before. There's less that can go wrong with a USB mic because it's either it's working or it's not. So maybe it's a driver issue occasionally, but rarely, rarely the case. But more than more often than not, you just unplug it and plug it back in. Turn it off and on. And that's the, the solution. That's what you use to solve it. Um, and it's very portable. So again, I can I can wrap this up in its little nice little traveling case and I throw that in my kit bag along with my adapter and its cable, like which I don't have here, but the micro USB to, to USB cable, and that's it, that's my, my whole rig. And then I just plug that directly into my iPhone while I'm on the go, and I'm good to go. And I, I do, look, I can use this. This is not super portable, but I do take this with me as well. Um, but yeah, again, I need to take that. I need to take an XLR mic, an XLR cable, a USB cable, and a mobile battery if I need to power it up. So there's a lot of things that we actually need when we're using XLR setup. So keep that in mind. What are the disadvantages though? Um, so it's limited. So it's not in any way expandable. So all of those upgrade options we talked about, you just have to basically replace it. So you have to buy a new one if you want the next level up. Um, they are hard to use multiple mics. So I mentioned that before, you can't really plug in multiple USB mics and effectively use them. So you've got four people and you've got four USB mics. You can't just get a four, four port hub, plug all four mics in and hope that it's going to work because you're going to have a lot of trouble with the mixing, with telling your device which one is which. It just doesn't like it. Like I, I promise you, if you're using multiple mics, set up you want to have something that has that um and it doesn't it's not great for stream well it is good for streaming but for doing a job like i'm doing here i'm using a mixer which means that i've got my ipad that i can bring the sound in the sound from my pc my microphone here and i can control the volume i can turn the volumes up and down as i go along with this it would be a lot harder if i just had this plugged in right now i wouldn't be able to bring in any additional audio this would be it so this would be the only audio going in, whereas you're using an interface, you're using a mixer, you can actually control multiple inputs a lot easier than with the USB. Um, and it's, yeah, so that's it. Sorry, my last one here was it's harder to control the mixes of your volume. So there you go. Let's just uh, summarize that again. So what is the difference between XLR and USB? Well, fundamentally, it's the cable type. So we're talking about a USB cable on this one that plugs into there. We're talking about an XLR cable on here, which is this one here. But the key difference here is that this has everything built in. This has its audio interface. This has its input, its output. It is plug and play. You simply plug your USB cable into your Mac, your PC, or via your lightning to USB adapter, and then you are good to go. So if you're looking for simplicity, if you're getting started and you don't want the hassle of having a bunch of gear, a USB mic can be great. If you're getting started and you want to have the expandability, the flexibility, the compatibility, then XLR could be the way to go. And if you're doing it this way, my recommendations are to get a Steinberg UR12, which retail between $70 and $100. That they're over at studiolivetoday.com slash gear. That's my favorite interface. An XLR cable will only cost you $5 or $10, so make sure you get one of those. The Lightning to USB adapter, if you're using an iPhone or an iPad, 
and then pick up a microphone. This is the uh, Samson CO1, by the way, which is my other recommendation. I use this for all of my live streaming. I use this for a lot of my uh, voiceovers in my videos. So this is what you hear my voice on now, but also when I'm doing my video tutorials and when I'm doing a lot of music stuff, I use this one, the MXL 550 and 551 pack. Both of them are around $70. So it really is up to you which direction you go. You can't really go wrong with either. Um, and I, I, as I said, I've, I use them both on a daily basis and uh, and I recommend them both. So that's the other way to go is to actually go down that path. So once again, if you're interested in that and if you have questions about that, if you're on the live stream, drop your questions now because I'm about to jump back over. We are, yep, we have just hit the 20, I said 15, we did 20 minutes on that. So sorry, I took a little longer, uh, but now we're going to go back in. We're going to chat to the folks here live, answer some questions. But if you're watching on the replay, then throw your questions down in the comments too and let me know what you use, if you're already using something or or your recommendations for other folks if they're getting started in the whole world of microphones because it can be can be a bit of a minefield it gets a bit confusing so uh yeah thank you for for that hopefully you found that valuable let's jump back over here and say hello because we've got a lot of folks here that are chatting here so uh we've said hello to me um <laughs> Ian Skegg says, uh, please talk slower. It's a bit manic. The problem is that uh, I do these streams in the morning when I'm uh, just usually on my second coffee. Like this. Um, so yeah, I get excited and I get passionate and I talk fast. So yeah, I do know that and I do, uh, I do try to slow things down, but I also don't want to waste time. So I don't want you to sit here listening to me talking too slow because time is valuable. Um, so thank you. Uh, da, da, da. So hello to uh, Amatul. Okay, in your hands is a very good mic. Uh, uh, which one? Yes. So yeah, wh whichever one it was. Uh, yes, they are both good mics. The MXL 550 is good, and the Samson um, Samson Meteor is very good too. Um, da, 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 da. So broke chain. Hello to you. Good to see you here. I found my USB mic to be better than my USB mic. Maybe maybe better than your XLR mic, perhaps. Um, yeah, so they can definitely be. The, the USB mics these days, depending what you get, like the Blue Yeti sounds amazing. If, you, if you've got that, and even the Samsung Meteor sounds really, really good. So yeah, you can definitely get some as good, if not better sounds as well. Uh, Kenneth Briggs says, in the studio, I use my Sterling Condenser ST51 mic. Very cool. I haven't used the Sterling, uh, Sterling mics before. Um, but yeah, uh, th there are a heap out there. This is why I, I have like my two recommendations. Like you could literally go out there. There's about a hundred different brands and a hundred different mics in that sort of 50 to a hundred dollar entry level range. And then when you get over a hundred dollars, there's even more, it just opens right up. So uh, I stick with what I use because that's what I can actually recommend. Uh, Super, Superfly UI, I use the Blue Yeti USB, which has a knob that allows you to switch between condenser and the large diaphragm mic. Ah, oh, yeah, so we didn't talk about this because we talked entry-level mics, but it, if you're getting into the higher end uh, USB microphones, they'll have a couple of things on there. So they'll have um, a switch that'll often, often switch between things like a cardioid and a hypercardioid, or even like an omnidirectional pattern. So they'll have different mic patterns that you can switch between, and the others will also have a pad, which is usually a 10 dB, 10 decibel pad, which means that if you're miking up a very loud source and you need the mic to be quieter, because condenser microphones can be quite loud. So if you need it to be quieter, you can flick that switch and turn it down so it's not picking up as much sound. So yeah, if you're in the usually the $100 plus range, you start getting some of those options, which can, can improve your microphone, can give you a lot more flexibility with your mic. So excellent call. Thank you for, for throwing that in there. Superfly. UI again, very cool name. Uh, Kenneth Briggs says, In the field, I use the Rode TXM2 wireless with my Rode Filmmaker kit and also use the realistic highball 33 984 dynamic mics. So, again, there's just so many different options that you can use, but yeah, the Rode, um, yeah, the Rode wireless stuff is, is super cool. Um, probably not in the budget range, but uh, yeah, definitely very cool. If, you, if you're into things when you need to be uh, on the go and mobile and, and using wireless, then yeah, it's a whole new world, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we could spend a long, long time talking about wireless as well. Um, so, um, um, Chul. Okay, uh, I, blue, I use the Blue Yeti too. Sweet, yes, yep. Um, Kenna says I, I have the Rode NT USB that I love. So yeah, that was that the the NT version. That's the USB version made by Rode. And again, anything with the word Rode on it, they're made in Australia. So maybe that's why I'm a bit proud of them. I don't I don't own any Rode stuff at the moment. I really think I need to buy an NT NT one A or an NT two to, to have in the studio here because yeah, I feel I feel bad. I feel uh, I need to support my country and actually use some Rode products. Um, so a question here from Goth Demon. 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I connected my Shure SM58 into an XLR to quarter inch adapter and into the Tascam IXZ and then into the GarageBand. I get very little to no volume. How come? Would a USB mic work better? So yeah, um, and, and you probably got the answer to this as we went through that. So the Tascam IXZ, um, I don't have it handy here. It's in the drawer down there somewhere, but it basically is the same as the UR12 here in that it has, um, it has a combo jack, in fact. So you can plug in an XLR cable and you can plug in a quarter inch cable. The problem is though, that if that these two jacks are very different. So this one has a preamp, which is the preamplifier that I was talking about before. So what that will do is it'll boost the volume of your signal. So when you're plugging in something like a microphone, it will actually give you a nice boosted loud signal coming through. What your high Z or your instrument input, your quarter inch input is for, is actually plugging an instrument into which has a very different level of volume signal coming through. So if you're plugging a guitar in there, it's gonna sound fine. You're gonna get enough volume and it's gonna sound good going through an amp simulator. A microphone, especially a dynamic microphone like the SM58, is not gonna have enough going through. So that is why you need to have one of these cables. Whoop. You need an XLR to XLR cable. So you put this end into your, your microphone. Now, this is a condenser, but assume, pretend it's the SM58. And then this end would go into your X, uh, to your Tascam IXZ with the three pin. And then when you turn your power on, um, well, not your power, you turn it on to microphone mode, it's going to be using the preamp and it's going to use the power in the actual device to power up that preamp. And then even though you don't need the, the phantom power for the SM58, you're going to get a louder signal going through. Now, keep in mind though that dynamic microphones do have a lower signal already. So you're not going to get as loud a volume going through from a dynamic as you would with a condenser mic. But if you plug in through the XLR jack, it's going to go through the preamp and you're going to get a better, louder signal coming through. Um, so hello to Emilio Hernandez Castilla. Hello to you. A question from Jeremy Ray Williams. How about lightning microphones like the IQ6 from Zoom? $99.99 on Amazon. Yeah. So these, this is, I didn't cover this because it's a, it's a, a niche area, I guess, and they don't tend to fall too much into the budget. However, I have been looking at this, this new microphone. So let's bring it up because uh, we can probably take a look at it. I'm just going to jump over to Amazon and bring up this one because this is the Zoom, uh, what was the model number again? It was the Zoom IQ6, that's right, because there's a, a few of these that are made now. So originally, um, Shaw, so Shaw make a couple of these, um, Apollo, I think, make one um and then yeah there's there's these ones the zoom iq6 so let's load up here on amazon and take a look at these because these are microphones that instead of using a usb that you then have to convert with your lightning to usb adapter what they're going to do is they're going to plug directly into your lightning port so you don't need any adapter and you can plug straight in and plug and play uh my internet's being very slow here here we go so uh, zoom iq here we go, the Zoom IQ6. So what this is, it is, we'll bring up this one here. So yep, there it is, $99.99 at the moment. And look, it looks nice. Oh, look at these, these Zoom capsules with the XY stereo mic. So what this is, is it's a lightning, lightning connection down the bottom here that you can see there. So you plug that directly into your phone and then this pops out the top. So you have your gain dial that you dial in there and then you have your stereo XY pair. Now, from memory, let me just check. Does this have, uh, does this have a headphone jack? There was, there was a, yeah, yes, it does. So this one does. There's some of these, I think the entry level one by Shaw and a couple of others that don't have a headphone jack. So if you're using these for music, make sure again, you get one with a headphone jack like this one, the IQ6, which uh, has, so it's got dual capsules there. Um, it's a dual condenser. So small diaphragm condensers in an XY. So you just point this at your source, you play it. And then this is how it looks hooked up to your phone. You plug it in down there via lightning, you dial it in and then you're good to go. And yeah, you can use it as an audio recorder. Now these are originally designed more as sort of ambient sound recorders to record like a live performance or to record um, like voiceover, sort of voice memos and that sort of thing. That's why you see it hooked up here to like a voice recorder. Um, but a lot of people use Zoom for, for, for music these days and they are quite high quality capsules that they usually have on these. So yeah, I, I think it would be okay. I, I did, I have seen, is there a Zoom IQ7 now, I think, which is the next, yeah, here, uh, oh, it's cheaper. Okay, uh, which seems to have some more options on here. So IQ7, there it's got the headphone jack again. What is the difference here? Same thing, stereo microphone, uh, or refurbished this one is. Um, yep, so it's 
fairly similar there. Okay. And you've got little switches on there for 90 degree, 120 degree. So you can you can rotate the capsules there and capture some different sounds by the looks of it. So same sort of thing. Um, the other one I was thinking of was the Shure MV88, which is, well, while we're talking, while we're talking about these, that is this little baby here. So you're going up to a next level again, but this thing, saw some reviews the other day it is very nice and there's the mv88 plus now which is apparently even nicer so yeah 150 dollars. so you're paying for premium but again there's your little shore capsule on there pops on the top there now is this the one that doesn't have the headphone jack this one might even be the one that doesn't so you, you do have to be really really careful this is great for sort of capturing live sound but as soon as you want to multi-track or record multiple tracks of audio then you need something that actually has a headphone jack maybe it's this one here that actually has the mv88 plus anyway you're up at 250 dollars at that point so you're getting a little bit uh, getting a little bit intense there with how much you're spending but yeah a great point um who was it that made it let's come back and uh, and find them so that i can give them the credit um, but excellent question there from Jeremy Ray Williams, of course, my man, Jeremy Ray Williams. So yeah, the, the IQ6 looks like a good option. Um, and maybe it's something that I need to get one of them in um, at some stage and play with because it would be really cool for not only your music, but just recording on the go. So I, I take this and it's pretty good. So you, you just plug this in, but I've got to have this and I've got to have my cable and I've got to have my adapter. If I just had that little zoom plug it into the end of your lightning, hit record and you're away, that could be really cool. Especially if you if you coupled that with your video camera of your iPhone and you recorded some live performance, I can imagine that that would go really well. Great point, great question. Um, Kenneth Briggs, I have all the dongles for my iPhone and iPad Air too. Yeah, tell me about it. I, um, I invested the other day. Oh, where is it? Uh, I've got... This one coming up, so I'm working on a video at the moment where I will be displaying this one, the Lightning 2 Digital AV. So this is your Lightning 2 HDMI connection, um, adapter, dongle. So yes, I have another expensive piece of white plastic that I'll be talking about soon here on the channel. Um, but I got that so that I can display my iPhone and my iPad on my um, on my LCD monitors here and eventually uh, capture the HDMI into this. So when we're doing these sort of demos, instead of you know having to screen share and, and do weird things with um, AirPlay, I can just plug straight in and capture it via HDMI. Anyway, um, but yes, all the dongles. Uh, hello, 650 Thunderbird. Hello to you too. Um, Ian Skegg says, I need a decent reel-to-reel -reel recorder. I know it's expensive, but I think it's the, I think it's good. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I, I don't think I'd ever go back. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever go back to tape. Um, I had a Tascam Tascam Porter Studio originally, which I thought was the the bomb back in the day. Uh, but yeah, I don't miss a lot about having to to worry about tape and having to worry about rewinding and winding on. But yeah, if you if you want to capture old school and you want to go old school, yeah, definitely. Um, you can't yeah you can't beat that tape sound in some. I know Foo Fighters did a, an album to tape, and a lot of artists still love a recording to tape. Excuse me. <coughs> I need a mute button. See, th these have mute buttons. That's the other good thing. You can have a, a cough button. Of course, I could drop the volume on my mic, but then I'd probably never set it back again and you wouldn't be able to hear me again. Um, uh, so Kenneth says, I have the Alesis. I record four channel mixer and runs four XLR cable hookup and the Zoom H4M Pro. Yeah, Kenneth, you got you got some pro setup going on there. I really like that. You, you should be making videos. You should be showing us your setup because that sounds really, really cool. Um, stuffed Productions. I'm going to sleep. Imagine if I wake up with 200 subs. <laughs> Imagine, um, yeah. Well, maybe I'll maybe you might wake up with one more. I'll, uh, I'll I'll go and check out your channel. Um, tell tell us about your channel. Um, so super FY super fly UI. The mic you're using is the first mic ever recorded on classic good quality. Yeah, this is the Samson CO1 again. Uh, people have said to me, why are you still using the Samson? You've been using that for five years. It's because it sounds like this. Like it's clear. It's it's crisp it's good quality audio it suits my voice um i've tried more expensive mics and they don't sound as good so yeah it's the, it's the old adage uh, dan baker who's a, a very good uh, youtuber here if you're not if you're not subscribed to dan baker go look him up now dan baker he does a lot of cool home studio and music stuff uh, yeah he, he always says if it sounds good it is good um so if you're using a virtual instrument and it sounds good then use it don't worry that it's not the real thing and it's the same thing with microphones the same thing with gear if it's 20 years old and if it's dented and scratched but it sounds amazing don't go out and buy a $200 new shiny thing because it probably won't sound as good. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So, uh, Samson C03 in my studio works great. So, Jeremy Ray Williams also rocking the Samson. And Goth Demon says, thank you for answering. You're welcome. 
condenser mics need voltage, not power. It's needed just to charge the plates. Yes, yeah, so you need uh, voltage. You need, what is it? 44 volts. Yep. Um, 48. 44. What am I talking about? Uh, 48 volts of phantom power, which is to charge to use it. Yeah, we're not not getting not diving deep into the technical side because um yeah it's it's we could spend a lot of time talking about the 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 well actuallys and all of the the details, but um yeah we're just going to keep it pretty simple here in this one. But no, definitely definitely it. How can a mic be digital? That's nuts. It's pressure waves. <laughs> How can a mic be digital? Well, yeah, it is. It is. It's all analog to digital, isn't it? Um, you can't record ones and zeros unless your voice is ones and zeros, but that would be really difficult unless you were a robot. And unless there's any robots here, then no, not going to work. Um, so Jeremy Ray thanks, Pete. I'm looking to capture found sounds with my iPad. I need a simple mic solution other than the built-in mic. The Zoom IQ7 or IQ6 looks to be the option. Yeah, I think so. And let me know. If you do pick one up, let me know what it's like. Um, because, yeah, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm super tempted. I have my iPhone with me all the time. I'm always recording stuff. And, and at the moment, I just use either the built-in mic or I use my headset mic, which is good for just voiceover and, and audio commentary stuff on my videos. But, yeah, I would really love one of those solutions. And like I said, the Shaw, the Shaw looked good, especially with, like, that dead cat thing to stop down the wind noise because wind is horrible when you're recording on location but um yeah let me know if you do get the zoom iq6 or iq7 um because yeah they look cool um all righty uh are you going to release another song one day <laughs> good question uh and yes so i'm working on a song at the moment funnily enough uh, speaking of dan baker who i just uh, referenced before uh dan recorded some strings some violins to a song that i wrote in oh October, September, October last year. It's like six months ago. Um, and it's been sitting there waiting to be mixed. So I'm finally mixing it. In fact, I'm recording the video of it today. So I've got, after I do this live stream, I've got the setup, the rig here. I'm going to plug my iPhone iPad in and I'm going to record a video where I'm mixing this song because I did a bit of a preliminary mix and I shared it over on the GarageBand users Facebook group and then uh, I got some feedback from them so I'm going to jump back in and record that so spoiler alert in the next uh, day or two you're going to be able to see uh, a new video there which is going to be for um, going to be for my new song so yeah it's called Things Change and I did uh, there's a bit of a I did a bit of a demo of it a while ago. Let me just see if I can find it and I'll throw it in the chat here. You can take a, a listen to it. Um, uh, I'll do that later. People don't need to wait around for me to click around and find things on SoundCloud. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so so look out for that one. But yes, I will be recording a song and that's, it, it is a it is a, a trap, I guess, that I do a lot of these videos and then I don't want to ever lose sight of the fact that I'm actually recording my own music as well. So the last song I recorded was my punk song called Goats by my fictional band Fear Cut, which is available now and where all good music is streamed. If you search Goats by Fear Cut, F-E-A-R-C-U-T, you can check out that song. Um, but yes, I'm working on more songs as well. Um and super fly fy it's not about quantity with gear it's quality yeah exactly um and i'd, I'd preface that by saying yes it's especially for the 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 gear that you're using you, you want to make sure it's the right gear for you the right quality for you and if you're going to buy another piece of gear uh, the only thing the only thing that i'd say that's different to that is that sometimes you want a different sound so for instance with guitars i own about five six guitars i don't own one three thousand dollar guitar but i own like a thousand dollar taylor and a three hundred dollar um little martinez um ovation over here and like a five hundred dollar epiphone uh, les paul so i like that because i get different sounds if i owned just one like five thousand dollar fender stratocaster that and that was all then that's all I'd be able to record. I'd get a really rockin' strat sound and nothing else. So I know that's a little bit side notey and a little bit off to the side, but the reason that, yeah, you, you do want to go for quality and not quantity. You don't just want to collect things unless that's what you're into and you want to collect things. Um, but yeah, you do want to be able to uh, have that. Um, so Rodney Smith says, what about the newer condenser mics? Oh, the new, I thought you said, what about the newer, as in the new ones, but the Niwa, uh, the Niwa brand, um, Niwa, okay. I actually have, I have a Niwa, which is the brand, by the way, N-W-N-E-E-W-E-R. So Niwa are a brand of microphone and a brand of audio that is, yeah, in the, in the budget range. They're probably a little bit more budget than what Samson and Behringer and others are. Um, I've only used one of their mics, which is like a shotgun mic, uh, that's for like camera for video use it wasn't fabulous but i do use niwa lighting i don't use lighting on these live streams but some of my videos i've got some little niwa lights that i use which are quite good so i haven't really tried them so i'm probably not probably not uh not able to uh answer that 
Um, alrighty. So thank you to everyone who's been chiming in here live. And what I wanted to do now is if there's no more questions, if there are other questions, I'll swing back at the end just to check in and make sure. But what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. And this part's always a little bit fun because uh, I always say when you do things live, it can go it, it can go one or two ways. It can go really smoothly and work or it can be a train wreck. It's usually nothing in between. And hopefully it's entertaining either way because if it's, uh, if it's really smooth, then you get to see something hopefully uh, useful. And if it's a train wreck, then you get to uh, laugh at me struggling as things don't work. So what I'm doing now underneath here is I'm plugging in my interface again, my Steinberg UR12. I'm getting that plugged in. I'm then connecting this up. Now I've got whole other videos where I show how I do this connection. So I'm not showing you me setting this up because you can go to those. There's a stream I did a couple of weeks ago. Just search Pete John's USB and you'll see how I connect up all of these USB devices, my audio interfaces, my uh, microphones, my everything. But for now, I'm just getting this set up because what we're going to do is we're going to come on down to my desktop and take a look at what is happening here. That's about as far as we can go, isn't it, without showing the tripod? There we go. We're back in focus. So we'll move that out of the way. So here we are. I'm going to turn this one up the way that you're going to be able to see it here, which is uh, my garage band. So why don't we set ourselves up? Now, what I have down here is I have my Steinberg UR12, which is plugged in and powered up. And this is now here on my iPad. So if we shimmy that to one side, we're going to swing the iPad around like this, set it up. Now I'm gonna be upside down and inside out here. So this is gonna be tricky for me, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna hit a new document here because I'm just gonna show you quickly. I thought we would just do a little quick demo of the difference between using a USB microphone, this one here, and using a XLR mic. So what I've got here is actually I'm, I'm going to record guitar. I was going to do vocals, but that's going to be a bit hard. Plus I've got a bit of a cold as you may be able to hear. So the vocals aren't going to sound too good, but let's just compare guitar. So here is, I'm going to bring it down into shot here. Here is my MXL 551 small diaphragm condenser. So I'm going to put this on its stand around about here and I'm going to plug this in via XLR. So where's my little XLR cable? It is uh, down here. So here is our live demo portion of the show. For people who like to learn visually, we are going to plug this end in here to the end of our XLR. Click, that's gone in there. Uh, can I bring that bit more into shot? There we go, down into here. Stay, it's gonna keep popping up. Um, and then the other end here is gonna go into my Steinberg UR12, which is over here. So we're gonna plug the other end in there find the right way around and bonk, clicked into place. So let's move these over a bit. There we go. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see much past there. Um, so now what we can do is if we go into our garage band here, now if you're using a Mac or a PC, this would be even easier. You, you, whatever digital audio workstation you're using, you would just come in here, you're gonna tap on your whatever it is to record. So I've just used the audio recorder here, which is the nice room guitar sound. If I give this a little tap, there you can see, it's actually coming in. Now input gain setting, we can't set it over here and I've showed this in a recent video, but we need to set the input gain actually on our audio interface. So let's bring the Steinberg UR12 over here. So this one here is gonna be our mic input gain. So if we turn this all the way up and now tap it, hang on, is that the wrong one? Uh, input two, uh, yes, I've used the wrong one. Okay, this one here. So if we turn this one up, what you're gonna see is, look at that, you, you can hear it really, like it's all coming through there. I don't have monitoring on so you won't hear it, so you're not blowing your ears off. But if we bring it back, this is what you're actually going to dial in. You're going to dial it in on the hardware because there's no way to change this input gain. It's all controlled by the hardware. So now, yeah, it's still going to be really loud. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have to dial that in as we go. So I'm going to start playing. Sorry again for the setup here. You're not going to be able to see everything very, very well because it's all a little bit close and close for comfort here. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to record some guitar here and I'm going to dial it in and see if we can get the right sort of level on this one. So let's grab my guitar like this and bring this one over a little bit closer and make sure it's going to stand up. There we go. So 
So it's going to have to go up quite a bit here to be picked up. So that's close, but it's still going to be peaking a little bit. So we'll get this right as we go. But what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to plug this in to the headphone jack of my Steinberg UR12, which is going to be over here if I can see it properly. And then we'll turn this up because what we're going to be able to do is actually monitor this audio as we go. So let's turn that one up there and let's come in here and turn monitoring on. Check one. You can hear it coming through there. I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn this mic off. So that's this one up here that you can't see that I'm talking through. And uh, let's just uh, record a little bit of a test run here to start with and see how we go. So that is recorded. Let's bring this mic back up and we'll turn monitoring off. And let's just play this back now. And there you go. So that's playing back. It's, it's sounding terrible because I um I didn't play it very well. And um yeah, it's the wrong speed and the wrong um like the wrong time signature for this song. So again, I should have set up a little bit better than what I have done here. But that's how simple it can be. Like when you're using an XLR microphone, you might think there's a lot of components, but really all it is is this. You've got your your microphone that you're recording into that just needs to be plugged in via XLR to an interface. And I'm using the Steinberg UR12. I think it was uh, Goth Demon who mentioned he uses the Tascam IXZ, which is an even simpler setup that uses your three and a half mil jack. So you can use something like that. You then just need your output, which in this case is going into my mixer here, but that would just go to your headphone jack. And then all you need to do is plug into something like this using you know, lightning to USB adapter, and then you're good to go. You can record your sound in with no problems at all. Now, we are running low on time. I did, I did have visions of recording like a song here today, but maybe that's something we can do. If you, wanna, if you wanna see a live stream where I like record a whole song, let me know because it's something that we can do and it might be a bit of fun and I can set up a little bit better than what I did here. But now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn down this volume over here so we don't pop our ears here. I'm gonna unplug everything that we have here because now what we want to do is bring in this baby. I'm going to bring in the Samson USB and just show you the difference between setting up and recording with this. We'll just shimmy all this other gear out of the way because we don't need any of it and make sure it's all unplugged. And then we're going to borrow this cable that we used here, this a USB micro or mini. I always get those confused. Which one's the thicker one. Is that the mini or the micro? Don't know. Anyway, here is our USB microphone. We're going to plug in here and click that one in like that. So that's plugged in there. And then we're going to get our, where did my lightning to USB go? Uh, where did I put it? I, I've lost it. It can't have gone far. I just had it. It's obviously been shoved somewhere and now it's out of sight. That's all right. We're going to recover, go to my backup plan. Here's, uh, here's my spare. <laughs> so we're going to use the lightning to USB, the regular one. This is the one that doesn't have the additional charging cable. So we're going to plug that in there. This goes into our iPad like so. Plunk. And this should turn on. Bump. There it is. Audio device connected. Do you want to turn on monitoring? Yes, we do. Uh, let's turn ourselves back up over here. Let's hit the on button. Why is that not monitoring? Why are you not? Mo oh, because we're still in. Okay, we're going to have to go back and create a new track. Go back, back to the track. So let's go pop a new track here. Audio recorder again. And oh, it's, it's got the mute on. Well done, Pete. There you go. Now it's actually coming through. So we're tapping on that. And there it comes through. Um, so that is all good. If we turn monitoring on now. Um, check, check. Why is that not coming in? Is it because our, our oh, you know why? Oh, Pete, you're doing well here. We haven't plugged, we haven't plugged this into the microphone. 
So this would be what would be happening. This is, I, I did that on purpose, you see, because this is what would happen if you're using a mic that didn't have a headphone jack. You wouldn't be able to monitor your audio going in. So this is why it is essential that you have a headphone jack. So all I've done now is I've plugged my mixer connection here into the headphone jack of that sucker. And now when I turn this back up, there you go. Now we're hearing that coming through. So we'll turn that around and face it to me. And we'll talk into this one. Check. One, two, la. So that might be around about the right volume. This one, we actually dial in with the input gain here on the iPad. So this doesn't have, it has a headphone jack. So it has a headphone volume, but it doesn't have an input gain. So it's got analog input gain. So anytime you see this dial here where you can actually shift it up and down, then make sure you dial that in correctly. Make sure it's not clipping when you're playing because if you have it up too loud, look what happens. Yeah, it suddenly does that. You don't want that. You want it down nice and low so it's going to record okay. So let's do a little bit of a test recording on this one now. I wonder if I can play along to my other recording, if that's going to work. Let's give it a go because why not? All right, so I'm going to turn my mic volume down again and we're going to shift over to this mic and let's try this recording now. All right, we need to go back to the start. Uh, there we go. played a completely different part. <laughs> so that was great. I played a completely different part. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. that that's going to have sounded awful. Let's play it back together because this could be uh, quite amusing. It's going to sound terrible. Uh, so we'll go back here to our track view. Um, but you can see there, that, look, it's just recorded the same. No, I'm not going to play them together because you only you had to hear that once already. Turn off my monitoring and let's just hear that track. And again, the terrible playing is going to make it really hard for you to get a good feel for this. I'm sorry about that. I should have uh, played something a bit better. Um, let's compare this to the original recording. So similar bad playing, but um, the quality is about the same, yeah? So you can see here the waveforms that have come through are around about the same. Uh, we've dialed in our settings. It didn't take us much longer with this setup as it did like, about the same amount of time to set up through here as it did the XLR. And you probably, if I had to say the quality of these, and again, it's not a proper test. Maybe I'll do a proper test next time. Um, the quality is a little bit better on the XLR than it was on the USB. Let's just play these together. It'll be fun. That's just terrible. Oh, dear. Um, I don't mean to be self-deprecating. I, I can play guitar well, but, geez, that wasn't it. Um, so, yeah, that that's just a little quick demo. Like I said, I didn't want to spend a lot of time with this, but I thought for some people you'd want to actually see, look, how hard is it when you're on the go especially and you've got a mobile studio to set up your USB mic or to set up a an XLR mic and actually get recording, and that is it. So it's not that difficult at all. So let's shimmy the gear out of the way there, and we'll bring my camera back up. Hello. There we go. Um, so there we go. We are nearly at the end of our stream uh, here today. We are, are we over time? No, we had two minutes to go. So we're only going to go a little bit over time because I did want to return back and say a few final closing words and thank folks here and see if there's any final questions that we need to answer. I just need to actually find the chat again. Um, all righty. So yes, we talked about Niwa. Um, so the Niwe 175 is a great little light. So yeah, so Kenneth Briggs, so Ken Kenneth, we got a chat, man. Um, you, you've clearly got some, uh, some knowledge there in the, in the video filmmaking and audio world. Uh, yeah, I need to, I need to chat to you and find out. Um, has anyone pre-recorded a pre-recording of a pre-recorded pre-released pre? What? I'm not quite sure what you're saying there, Ian Skeggs. Um, yes, I don't have time to process that if, it, if it's, <laughs> if it's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I can't quite, uh, I can't quite grasp that in real time. Um, so, uh, uh, Amtool, uh, HK, have a serious budget, but you have an iPhone or iPad, get started with a Logitech 390 noise cancelling USB headphone with mic for $20 as an Apple USB adapter for 30 
there you go. So that's another option I, that, that I've probably not considered, which is using a headset microphone. And actually someone asked me that question during the week. Can you use a USB headset microphone with uh, the Lightning to USB adapter? And I've never actually tried it. I have tried some um, wireless, like wireless Bluetooth ones before, which the lag on anything Bluetooth, and we didn't talk Bluetooth today because in honesty, the, the lag on Bluetooth stuff is just too much in my view. Um, but yeah, it, the if you're using a headset mic, yeah, that, that would be cool. Um, it's worth a try. Maybe I need to. I've got a couple of wireless headset. In fact, I've got, what have I got? This one down here. Oof. I wonder if this would work. This would be an interesting one to test. Might be testing this one out afterwards. I've got these, which are the uh, the Logitech, Logitech somethings, HD something. Can't remember what they are. Anyway, they're my, they're my wireless. So these use Bluetooth, but they also use a USB dongle. So I use these, can't see them. I use these with my laptop and my desktop as a wireless for like video conferencing and thing. And they've just got the little microphone like that. So yeah, maybe I need to test that one out. See if that's a goer. Uh, something fun to try again later. Uh, so uh, Broke Chain says, totally off topic, but if you use Amuse.io and decide to use DistroKid later, would you be able to do so? This is a really good question. Um, so yeah, it is off topic, but that's okay. Cause uh, I'll, I'll hang around and answer a few additional questions. Um, yeah, so if you use, uh, it basically comes down to what the stores have you listed as. So you can distribute under your name through any distributor. So a distributor doesn't get uh, exclusive rights to your music once you start distributing with them. So for instance, I've just started distributing through amuse.io with my fictional band Fear Cut. I released my first song Goats through them. And if I then wanted to release Fear Cut music through DistroKid, I could do that as long as I put Fear Cut in. I'd have to be careful to make sure that it aligned those. So that's probably the biggest challenge you'll have. If you've got a name that's not completely individual, you want to make sure it selects the right one in your Spotify's and your Apple Music so that it's not putting your music with someone else's music, if that makes sense. So that's probably the only risk. Um, but to go the other way around, so to go distro kid to amuse, yeah, it's interesting. And I haven't had the guts to try it yet, but maybe with a future release, I'll actually sign up to amuse using my Pete John's uh, name and then then release through them and see if it lines up that song with all of my distro kid releases. So yeah, maybe I'll, I'll give that a go uh, soon and see if that actually works. But yeah, a good question. And um, I'm actually I'm finalizing an, another song I'm working on at the moment, the final countdown. I did a little acoustic version of that recently. So uh, I'm going to release that through Amuse as well under the fear cut name, just to see how releasing a cover with Amuse goes. So stay tuned for that one. Um, Jeremy Ray Williams says, thanks, Pete. That was great. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And if, if folks did enjoy this, uh, as I said, I'd appreciate it. If you put a like on the video, share it with anyone who you think would uh, also appreciate it. And I'll, I'll sign off with a few other things that you can do at the end here, if you so desire. Um, Kenneth says, thanks for a great show, Pete. Thank you for tuning in and, and for your, your views here. Um, and Ian Skeggs, Pete, a thought for your song, when birds fly, they don't think. When birds fly, they don't think. I wonder, do birds think when they fly? I don't know, it's, it's for the birds. I do like my bird songs, so maybe I'll get on to that. <laughs> I love your comments, Ian. Uh, you always make me think and laugh, and I'm not sure which one I'm doing sometimes. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, Amatul HK, oh, so it, it, I didn't at work. So talking about the USB wireless headphones, that they did work, well, very cool. I, I, will, uh, I will endeavor to use that, and then I'll try the wireless one out too, because that could be kind of funky. Like using my wireless headset over USB, which means it removes the lag. And then, yeah, even just for, for videos and things like this, it might be kind of cool. Anyway, worth a try. Uh, Superfly UI, is there a way I can hook up my iPhone to TV screen to record a session? Is there a way I can keep my phone charged to be able to record for longer? Um, yes, so there's a couple of questions there. To a TV screen to record a session. So you can output it via HDMI. So if you've got something that can capture HDMI on your TV screen, you can. And that was this cable I was showing you before that I'm about to test out, the, uh, the Lightning to AV cable that outputs via HDMI. Um, if you wanted to, the other way to capture is to use AirDrop, uh, not AirDrop, AirPlay. So if you've got an Apple TV or something that you can AirPlay to, you can use that to AirPlay from your phone or your tablet to display it on a bigger screen. Uh, actually capturing it's a bit harder. So what I'd suggest for that is using the screen recorder function. And if you search Pete John's screen record, I've got about four different videos showing you how to use the iOS screen recorder to capture your screen, and then you can actually encode that video and then put it on YouTube, put it on Facebook, wherever you want to. If you want to share the actual the actual song or something that's on your screen, that's the better way to go about it. Um, is there a way that can keep a phone charged to be recorded longer? Yeah, so um, if you use the 
the device that I lost that I put somewhere, the, the larger one of these, the larger lightning to USB cable, the lightning to USB 3 adapter, then that can let you do that. So if you search lightning, uh, so yeah, just go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear and you'll be able to grab that. Um, yeah, and Kenneth says he has the HDMI dongle. Yes, very cool. Um, I'll grab one more song. Um, so I'll grab one more question. Uh, so Brooke Chain says, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Goth Demon says, I'd like to see you record a new song. Yeah, well, I, I think I might do that. I, I've done it before where I've done whole songwriting series, but never like a live version. So that could be kind of fun, plus way less editing for me. So maybe we do that where I actually uh, record, write and record a, a song live, uh, and then you folks can watch in um, and uh, join me with that. That would be very cool. Uh, does Distro Kid, so last question we have here from Superfly FY uh, UI does distro kids supply a way to copyright your material while distributing through them or do you need an external source uh, you need an external source if you want to do the full on copyright thing uh, this has come up a few times in the last week as well in a couple of forums and copyright is one of those issues that's like you could spend your whole life just running around working out copyright um, and yeah, it, it, it is hard. It's different in every country. It's different between the publishing and the writing and the performing and the producing. Like there's there's too many variables to actually go into the detail. And I don't know a lot of them to be very, very honest. My strategy from day one has been, I want to make my music, my original tunes. I'm going to document them. That way I've got videos of myself writing and recording the music. So right here on the channel, I mean, not, I know not everyone has that, but then I'm releasing the whole reason. And this is a good thing to finish off on. The whole reason that I say create, record, release, release and that I'm so passionate about releasing, finishing and releasing music is that once you've released a song, you've then got a, an official time stamped thing that says, here's my song. So if someone wanted to rip off my songs from my album, if someone recorded For the Birds and said it was their song, not only would I have all of the stuff I did before, which was all of the um, the recording, like the videos I got on my YouTube channel, but it's on Spotify and Apple Music and YouTube as of the date of release in August last year as my song. So if they release it, now in March 2019, well, then I've got a pretty good case. So I know that's not going to stand up in court and I know that, yeah, seek your own legal advice and do all that stuff. But I just worry that if I got too worried about copyright, I would spend all my time worrying about that and no time actually producing music. So maybe I'm naive and maybe in a few years time, I'll totally regret the way I went about this. But um, yeah, that, that's the way that I'm I'm handling things for now. But yeah, very good question. Um, yes. And bottom line is just enjoy playing. Couldn't have said it better myself, Ian. Just enjoy your music. Enjoy playing. The chances that someone's going to rip you off and make a billion dollars from your amazing tune is slim. Doesn't mean you're not making great music. But yeah, I, I would not spend too much time and lose too much sleep over it. Because again, you could spend a lot of your life worrying about what could happen instead of getting on and creating great music. Hey, thanks again. Like you guys are awesome. The, the folks, uh, you guys and girls who've, who've hung out with me live here and those who have um, watched on the replay, thank you so much. Uh, here's my, I say I give you an hour of content or 59 minutes of content and then one minute of shameless self-promotion. So here comes the close where I promote myself a little bit. If you head over to studiolivetoday.com, you can find all of my videos and all of the information about how to get in touch with me. You can also join the mailing list over there. So that's a brand new thing. You can get some exclusive content and it's, I won't bombard you. Don't worry. It's not a spam central with three emails a day. It'll be a couple of times a week and you just get the latest information, a little bit of interesting exclusive stuff there. If you want to get a t-shirt like the one I'm wearing, you can go to studiolivetoday.com slash merch. That's where you can pick up the t-shirts and the mugs. Um, if you want to support the channel, that way listen to my music go to petejohns.com to check out my album from last year selfish aware which you can see what all of this gear can make because again that's the important thing is actually making the music and if any of the gear we've talked about or any of the gear that i use that you'd like to check out you can go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear and there is a full list of all the gear that i use and recommend over there that you can check out this has been awesome thank you again everyone for being here again if you liked it drop a like if you didn't like it and you thought it was terrible drop a dislike but please let me know why let give me a comment and say what i can do better um, i'm always open to feedback thanks again folks have a great day afternoon or evening i'll see you next time